This is the PSI 211 Silver Nanoparticle Screen Print Ink. Now it's a water-based screen print ink uh, that you can use for printing on polyester, paper, polycarbonate, all sorts of papers and plastics. Um, now, anytime that you have a um, ink that you'd like to test from Novacentrix, whether it's screen print or FlexGraph or Inkjet, uh, you can just go to store.novacentrix.com and you can go ahead and select and purchase a sample quantity of that ink. This would be a sample quantity. This is approximately 100 grams. Uh, and then also what you should be able to find on those same web pages uh, is any kind of uh, technical documentation, both MSDS or technical data sheet in the case of this, that will give you some ideas of both what you should expect and what you receive and how to use that ink. Now, uh, in the case of what we have here, it gives you some good indications of, of technical descriptions, things like solid content, 42 weight percent, uh, something like pH. And pH for this sink is really important, right, because it is pH stabilized, meaning pH changes a little bit, you have differences in the viscosity of the ink. So as you're using the ink and the ink is, is draining down, you have more availability for the pH to become unstable. So take a measurement and what you should see is 5.8. If you do need to make an adjustment, you can adjust it with 0 0.05 weight percent ammonium hydroxide solution. Add that in. Make sure you stir real well. Um, there will be further documentation on things like that also available on the store page. Um, again, anytime you're screen printing, you're trying to make a circuit, right? So you have to consider the technical properties of the ink and how it's going to cure in what you're actually trying to make. What we have here is a simple uh, sheet resistance test image. And that's a thousand squares long, which means it's a thousand times longer than it is wide. And then when we cure it, we measure the resistance across that and we get what we call a two point resistance measurement. So from that, we can extrapolate if we have a different geometry, what are the electrical properties going to be? An ink like this, because of its electrical properties, would be good for making RFID tags, battery electrodes, um, electrochemical cells, things like that for biomedical purposes. And it should have a sheet resistance lower than, say, 25 milliohm per square. If you needed it to be higher or lower, what you would want to do is change slightly the mesh parameters that you are using to print the image in order to make it thicker or thinner. Okay. Now, one last thing, of course, as part of that and the properties that you'll get will also be dictated by how you cure it. Right? We recommend a lot of times using infrared. If you do happen to have an oven, such as a convection oven with air moving across in it, it gives you some indications on what you should do there. And the temperatures, like say for instance using polyester, you're going to want to use 140 degrees Celsius. That's mainly because the polyester will become unstable and warp if you try to go warmer than that. The papers, uh, most label papers and that you'll find are going to be really durable, even upwards of almost 200 degrees Celsius. But something like polycarbonate, you'll want to use no more than 100 degrees. Now remember, if you use a lower temperature, you might want to use a longer time. Uh, we like to use infrared, and again, infrared is going to be much faster in the case of this five seconds. We also like to use things like the Pulse Forge. And the Pulse Forge gives you the ability, especially on a pre-dried system, to get really good final properties extremely quickly, right? And so something like the machine that you see behind me would be a great example of quickly drying and curing uh, even a screen print ink for high production applications.